What's up, y'all, and welcome to this first ever Bite Size Breakdown, where over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to walk you through some issues that I'm seeing in Mitchell Trubisky's pocket presence and explain why fixing them is such a big deal. You see, over the last three Bears games, I've noticed two major trends, one positive and one negative. First off, nothing has led to point scoring opportunities quite like long offensive gains through the air, namely any throw over 16 yards. If the Bears completed a pass over 16 yards, they were in position to either kick a field goal or score a touchdown on that drive. This is consistent over the last three games. But on the other hand, nothing has killed drives more reliably than taking a sack. And unfortunately, the Bears offense has taken an awful lot of them recently. Some may suggest that this is because of poor play from the tackles, but I think a lot of it comes down to what Mitchell Trubisky is and isn't seeing, and I want to show you just what I mean when I say that. Now let's be real. I have a lot of options to choose from in just the Lions game alone. This first quarter sack season both failed to get the ball to a wide open David Montgomery and not throw the ball away, and this fourth quarter third and one seemingly sees him miss a draw and dump opportunity with Robinson as Robinson's defender leaves him wide open when he goes to make the tackle. But the play I want to highlight is this late fourth quarter sack on third and 11 that sees Mitch miss Ben Broniker breaking wide open over the middle and explain why it's such a big deal. Take a look at the Lions formation here. What you're looking at is a single high safety look that has the entire front seven up near the line with three DBs covering the receivers on the right and a safety waiting deep out of the frame. This is a classic blitz look, so Strabisky should call for a hot route from a receiving target. Basically, if the Lions blitz, the receiver, Broniker in this case, needs to break his route off early and be as available as possible for a quick throw from his quarterback. Sure enough, the Lions blitz hard, and Broniker does exactly what he's supposed to do by breaking behind the linebacker wide open in the middle of the field. So what goes wrong? Well, from what I can tell, Trubisky must not have seen the blitz until it was too late, because if he had, his first and only read should have been the wide open Broniker, who based on the way the corners are turned off the snap, may very well have had enough space to pick up the first down with his legs. But regardless of whether or not he'd have gotten the first down, Trubisky's got to show that he can recognize and beat a blitz, or else defenses are simply going to blitz him into the ground. Trubisky made some wonderful throws in Sunday's win over the Lions. Certainly, this back foot toss to Robinson might just have been the best of his career so far. But after taking five sacks in a game where he seemed to have reasonable relief options available while under duress, I think it's fair to start questioning his pocket presence. The sacks aren't the only thing killing Bears drives, but if Trubisky can take these negative plays and turn them into neutral or even positive plays, I certainly think the Bears would be able to extend more of their drives. And further, Furthermore, if Trubisky shows he can hit his hot routes consistently, defenses should blitz him less, leading to less oncoming rushers and more clean pockets, ideally resulting in more of these beautiful long gains. Long throws turn into points, and I don't have to explain why those are good. And that's all I've got for you. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, support me on Patreon, and check out my podcast as well as everything else we've got going on over at Windy City Gridiron. Bear down, and thanks so much for bearing with me.